Hello, and welcome to this video demonstration of the Department of Energy's Street Lighting Acquisition Evaluation Tool. Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory developed this tool in coordination with the Department of Energy under the Better Buildings Program's Outdoor Lighting Accelerator. The purpose of this tool is to help municipalities develop a first estimate of the financial implications of acquiring street lighting systems from the utilities that serve their territory, then retrofitting those street lighting systems with efficient lighting. This tool is somewhat flexible and can handle a variety of inputs, as this video will demonstrate. However, it also makes a number of simplifying assumptions. This tool is not a substitute for a full, detailed financial analysis that should precede any prospective purchase. Rather, we hope this tool will help users develop a ballpark first estimate to help decide whether and how to proceed further. The spreadsheet tool consists of three worksheets. First, the introduction worksheet contains information on the tool purpose and structure, basic instructions on its use, and links to related material. The inputs worksheet is where most users will spend most of their time. It takes in information about the costs and revenues from both the current and proposed street lighting systems, as well as costs and revenues that would obtain to purchasing the system. We will work through this sheet in more detail momentarily. The financial calculations worksheet summarizes financial information from the inputs tab and allows the user to develop a simple cash flow analysis and summary project financial metrics. We will also work through use of this sheet later in this video. One important note is that the tool contains a number of comments to the user which can be read by mousing over cells with red triangles in the upper right hand corner. For example, this lamp type cell contains a triangle in the upper right hand corner. When we mouse over that cell, we receive instructions and information. We begin this demonstration with a simple scenario and then we'll show how additional factors can be added to the analysis. Numbers chosen for this scenario should not be considered default values of any kind as there are many different ways to financially structure both street lighting tariffs and street lighting acquisitions. The only purpose of the numbers chosen is to demonstrate the function of the tool. In our scenario, let's suppose that the user seeks to purchase 7,000 street lights that are 150 watt high pressure sodium lights and re retrofit them with LEDs. We note the type of lighting and the number of lights being replaced up here in section A. Note that this lamp type field has no bearing on the calculations in the sheet, but it may help you organize your work. Now we need to represent the tariff that the current lighting system is charged under. Let's suppose that the tariff for these 150 watt high pressure sodium lights consists of two components, a $5 energy charge and an $8 facilities charge. Per fixture. We enter these tariff components separately in section A as shown. In some cases, a street lighting tariff may have only one rate component, in which case we enter the full component, the full amount in rate component number one. Now, let's suppose that once purchased and retrofit, we will have 7,000 LED lights and the utility tariff for the LED replacement lights being considered is a $3 energy charge and a $1 facilities charge. We enter this information as shown in section B. Now we also must represent the actual purchase of the lighting system. So to purchase the system, let's suppose that the municipality must pay $100 per fixture as a one-time upfront payment to acquire the fixtures from the utility. This information goes in section C, one time costs paid to the utility, 7,000 fixtures, there are 150 watt high pressure sodium fixtures, and we pay $100 per fixture to the utility. Now, let's additionally suppose that we must pay $600 per fixture to a third party to retrofit the bulbs and dispose of the old pumps. This information is entered under section M, municipal system acquisition costs paid to non-utilities. 
we have 7,000 fixtures, and we are going to pay $600 per fixture. We could enter cost of acquisition, installation, disposal, and other costs separately, or we can simply enter a single value that represents all of those combined costs, as we do in this simplified scenario. Finally, let's suppose that the municipality must pay $50 per fixture per year under contract to a third party who will maintain, clean, and relamp the fixtures as necessary. These are tasks that were done by the utility under the facilities charge in the previous tariff, but now will be the responsibility of the municipality. So these costs actually go back up in section B, proposed lighting system, ongoing cost for operations and maintenance. We are going to have an annual, note this is an annual amount, not monthly, an annual O&M cost per picture of $50. For this starting example, we will assume that there are no utility rebates or other revenue streams, and we will skip sections E and F of the inputs worksheet. There are also some options embedded in section C that we are skipping for now. And let's jump to the financial calculations tab. We see summary calculations at the top of the sheet. This system would require $4.9 million up front to purchase and retrofit. After doing so, annual cost of the system would drop from $1.092 million per year to $686,000 per year. If we want to see these costs rendered over time, we must input values in the inflation and cost escalation section. We will assume an energy charge escalation of 2% per year for both the current and proposed lighting systems. And for now, we will assume a discount rate of 0%. Skipping the financing sources for now, we scroll down to examine the cash flows and summary financial metrics. We see the initial purchase price as a negative value in year zero, then see positive operating savings that grow slightly each year due to energy cost escalation. At our chosen 0% discount rate, this purchase and retrofit has a net present value of about $2 million, and an internal rate of return of 4.6%. Now, suppose that the municipality would finance the system acquisition and has access to a low-cost fixed-rate capital source at 2.5% interest for the full upfront cost with a repayment term of 10 years. We enter this information in financing source one. It is a $4.9 million loan, finance the entire system, the interest rate is 2.5% and the term is 10 years. We see these changes reflected in our annual cash flows. Now the net upfront cost is $0 because of the financing, but these financing charges show up in each year through year 10 and then go to zero. Note that the operating savings do not cover the financing charges over the lifetime of the loan so net savings are negative for the first 10 years, then become positive in year 11 when the loan is completely paid off. The internal rate of return rises to 10.6%, but the net present value falls to about $1.5 million. The reduction in net present value is driven by our assumption of a 0% discount rate, which may not be reasonable for a municipality setting. Let's go back, remove the financing, and change the rate to 4%. Our net present value is much lower than before, at about $200,000. If we now include the financing again, net present value rises. IRRs, internal rate of returns, on the other hand, are not affected by the choice of discount rate and are identical to those previously calculated with a 0% discount rate. Having walked all the way through a simple example, let's go back to the inputs worksheet to demonstrate some other functionality of the tool. Our example involved replacing one type of lamp or fixture one for one with another type of lamp or fixture. The tool's calculations can be made more general than this by specifying up to four types of lamps in both old and new systems, each with their own tariff charges. For example, suppose that we also have some 120 watt high-pressure sodium lamps. We will replace 3,000 of these and 
the energy charge for these is only $4, but the fuel charge remains $8. Now, further, the total number of fixtures in the old and new system need not be the same, and the total number of lamps being replaced for each type need not be the same. So let's suppose that we are replacing both 150-watt high-pressure sodium lamps and 120-watt high-pressure sodium lamps with these same LEDs. That's fine. We don't need to have a second lamp type to correspond with the lamp type in section A. And in fact, there are 10,000 lamps total in section A, so we could have 10,000 lamps in section B. Or let's suppose that we can save some lamps in our system redesign. We can save 500 lamps and only have 9,500 LED. We'll handle this situ the spreadsheet tool will handle this situation just fine. Note that section we've looked at sections A and B, but all of sections A through E allow for multiple lamp types. And in all cases, you can specify the type and number of lamps independent from what you've specified in previous sections of the sheet. In section C and D, acquisition costs can be entered per fixture, as we've done before, or as a lump sum by changing the choice from the drop-down menus to the right of the entries. So for example, here we entered 7,000 lamps at $100 per fixture. Instead, we could simply enter a total 7,000 lamps will cost 700,000 total. And we wind up at the same place. We can also do this down here in section D, in section E, if these drop downs work the same way. Further in section C, the sheet allows a user to enter a charge paid to a utility for a limited time only. That's this section, the time limited monthly utility charge. This is an option offered by some utilities as a means of financing a street lighting purchase. This monthly charge can also be entered per fixture or as a monthly total. The user also must specify the number of years that this charge will be in place. For example, suppose that rather than paying up front to your utility, we will pay a monthly charge of $15 per fixture for 10 years to finance the system acquisition. We'd represent this as shown. The financial calculations worksheet also asks for a cost escalator for these time-limited charges. For a fixed charge that is not expected to escalate, the user should enter a 0% escalator or simply leave the cell blank. Section E of the inputs worksheet allows the user to enter any one-time payments the municipality will receive upfront for the purchase and retrofit. The most likely payments are utility rebates, which would be entered as follows. For example, suppose we have our 7,000 high-pressure sodium lights. And these lights will each be eligible for a $50 utility rebate. That is shown. Other upfront revenues of any kind could also be included here in this other upfront revenues. Again, expressed per fixture or as a total. Finally, section F is a catch-all for any other changes in net ongoing revenues expressed on an annual basis. These might include changes in insurance costs or franchise fees paid to or by the municipality for the right to use street lighting poles. A positive number in this cell represents a net increase in annual revenue from the system. A negative number represents a net decrease. So for example, if the system was going to earn revenues each year of $500 for whatever reason, we would enter it this as so. If the system was going to require new expenditure of $500 per year, we would enter that as so. While we won't take the time to walk through them all, all changes to the inputs worksheet flow through to the financial calculations worksheet immediately. If you wish to develop and save several different scenarios for comparison, it may be easiest to save each scenario as a separate file and compare them against each other. We hope this video demonstration of the street lighting acquisition evaluation tool has been helpful. For other helpful resources related to efficient street lighting, please visit the Better Buildings Program's Outdoor Lighting Accelerator Toolkit. The URL is here in the instruction worksheet of the tool.